Hello everybody, and welcome to this pretty amazing tutorial in which I'm going to show you how you can use Blender and very basic mesh modeling and smart lighting to create these six very interesting looking architectural spaces, focusing really on shapes and lighting and how we can create certain illumination effects. This is all going to be done, as I said, in Blender. As you see here, we have a, one of the demo scenes open. This is actually room two. This is a paper model. I created this model basically utilizing the techniques I used in real life, making paper models and then placing a small light and photographing it. We, however, just simply are going to do this digitally. So I'll show you the whole process of how to model these spaces and then how we can render them. What's really nice doing this digitally and rendering is, well, we can just prototype everything really fast and very effortly create different variations of our spaces or lighting positions. And then we're going to end this exercise with these two pretty amazing looking two images where we're going to a much bigger scale adding a human figure and really focusing on how we can work with architecture and shapes and light to create truly impressive emotional experiences. And with all that said, let's go and do it. Before we get started modeling our spaces and rendering them, we want to set up our environment. Let's go to the render tab. We set this to cycles and GPU for faster rendering. We want for the viewport, that's the viewport, really fast rendering. So we set the samples and denoise to 10. That's very fast, but good enough to get an idea. And then for final rendering, maybe 100. So there's like 10 steps cleaning up the noise, 100 steps cleaning up the noise. Then we can go to scene. We can work with imperial and separate units. We can turn on feet or inches up to your preference. Since I work more with architectural spaces, I will work with feet. Very good. Now I'm actually in top view. There we are. If your 3D cursor is not centered, shift S cursor to the world origin. This is the 3D cursor because at that position, now we're going to create a plane. This plane, I would like to be 10 feet by 10 feet. If I press N or click on this triangle, I get the transform panel. There it tells me 10 feet, 10 feet. Beautiful. Let's turn this into a room. We're going to edit mode, face select. This is already selected, but in case not, you can click on it selects the face, extrude, move this up. And while I'm moving this, type in 10 and enter. So that was 10 feet. If you work with inches, you would have to type in 120 inches or later we can simply type in 10 feet here. Beautiful. So I would actually know what is front, left, right. So top, bottom and when I go and select this one is this actually the front view so if I go to view viewpoint front yeah it is very good so let's actually delete this x and face beautiful now we have a room 10 by 10 by 10 and the front wall is open I would like to create a small cut in the center. To do this, well, I need to have some geometry to cut this open. So I rotate my view, go to loop cut, and you see how based on what edge I get this yellow preview. Here I simply click, that's it. Then I go back to select, click this edge and this edge. I'm in edge select mode, press X and say dissolve edge. This dissolve means it's removing it. And now this edge, I would like to open and create 
let's say a 10 inch wide opening. The reason why I created just a line is now I can use the bevel command and with the bevel command, well, bevel this edge, turn this into a chamfer. Here we can now say 10 inches, multiple segments. If for example, this would be a rounded corner, but we're just opening a slot. So one segment is fine. That's a nice trick of using a line and then using the line as a center line and then left and right creating an, an offset line actually. Press X and delete face. There we are, beautiful. So let's create a small bench. We exit the mesh editing, then we add a new plane. Now this plane I would like to be, this is X, B, 16 inches wide, maybe 20 inches. I can proportion this to the room. Then this all should be 18 inches off the ground. Very good. And now I would like this to snap to here. First, I will set up my snapping to vertex. Then I go to move and this object I move and now I hold the control key and I, you see when I go to this corner, it snaps to that corner, flop. Let's say a two inch thick slab to sit on. Okay, let's go to edit mode, go to extrude. We go down two inches, but actually negative because negative is going down, positive is going up. Now positive y is along the positive y direction. There, that's the way how we change the direction. Very good. And go to object mode. If this is, for example, too skinny in object mode, now we could say four inches. Yeah, that looks actually pretty nice. Beautiful. So this is the object center. This is at 18 inches off the ground. This object has four inches thickness, is actually 12, 20 inches deep. There's a scale factor here. So whenever we work with um, the dimensions and change them, we adjust the scale factor, go into the habit to then apply the scale. It's going to be very useful later. Beautiful. Okay, so let's actually add a light. Here is the light menu. We have point light, light, uh, well, light bulb, sun, parallel light, spotlight, like a flashlight, and area light. Think about it like a rectangular shape that emits light. Let's work with the point light. We'll move this up. And now we would like to see how this actually looks. This is the menu to turn on the rendering. You can also press Z key and then go to wireframe, shade it or render it, for example. My environment is not perfectly black, so I will go to the world, make this black and zero, perfect. So if we zoom in a little bit, then there we can see how the slide actually works. If I move this up or I'll move this down, move this under the bench, there you can see now from this point, the light is being emitted into the space. We can manipulate the properties of this light. Let's so maybe make this 100, really strong, one really soft, 50, something there in between. Because this is a point light, we also have a radius. The radius will make sense in a moment. I moved this out actually a little bit. Oh, look at this really interesting effect. So now the geometry, these walls are blocking the light and where it's open, the light comes in. When we play with the radius, we make this actually a little bit bigger. Let's say 
a one foot sphere. You see now this is really big. And pay attention to how these sharp shadows are different now. Six inches. So think about a sphere, six inches, and it's emitting light, one inch. And the smaller the surface, the sharper the shadow gets. In my case, I will go with three inches. Since this is now outside, if I go back to 100, I can make this really nice and big. This looks beautiful. We can go to the front view and then switch to perspective view and then with shift the middle mouse button, move around left and right. You can see how we can change kind of like how we look into this space. Okay, we're actually getting very close to finishing already this room. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. Here, I double click and say room one. And now all these objects are inside there. I will go back to this view. Very good. There we are. And then I can turn this one off. And then in the collection here, I say right click new collection. This will be room two. And let's add another plane. There we are. This is already 1010. 10. Perfect. Let's go to edit mode. E 10 enter. We know that this front face we would like to open. And then I have this actually here turned on, by the way. We would like to create a three by three foot opening. So check this out. I go to loop cut, click and drag, and then I go to the move command and drag this back and pay attention to the readout. So this reads good. So three feet and minus enter. One more time. Loop cut, click and drag. Then I bring this back. So this looks like three feet. Very good. Three and minus to go the opposite direction and enter. This face here, I would actually like to open. So I can press the Y key to open it or I go to mesh and split and say selection. Now this selection, I would like to become a new part, a new body. So go mesh and say separate or press the P key. What did this do? I have now a new body, which as you can see, I can select and go into edit mode. Here I will select these two edges, press X and say delete edges. Then these two edges, I can actually move down a little bit and then I press E and Z and move this down to there. Very good. Now we would like this to look nice. So let's add actually a point light. There we are. To now render and see better what we are doing, I'm going to here right click split vertical, split this. This can be smaller here. I press N and T so I don't see these menu elements. And then I press Z and select rendered. Pretty cool. Okay, now here in this menu, I can move this light around. Now well, there we can see again what interesting shadows it's creating. Maybe I go to a top view, Z and wireframe, move this to here, there. I'm kind of like hiding this light, this light make this really strong 100 and you see even while it's hidden there's so much light being emitted that bounces off and then illuminates the space and uh, move this upwards oh look at this really interesting structure we have this looks beautiful also here when we play with the radius 
of the sphere, we can get very interesting lighting effects. So maybe 0.25 there. Look how beautiful this looks. How soft the shadow at the end gets. You can bring this a little bit further down. There we are. Let's play with this a little bit. So this geometry I select, going to edit mode. Then I select these two top edges and bring them up a little bit. Look how I'm closing that gap, just having a little tiny bit of light shooting into that space. What happens when I move the slide down? Wow, this is really, really interesting. Okay, very good. The left and the front face of this body, I would like to move back a little bit. So in wireframe mode, I go to face select and then I move this in a little bit. There we are. Okay. I can also go ahead, leave edit mode, go this part and then go edit mode, edge select, shift left mouse button, click select all those edges and then I press E and Z and create a small tunnel. So the tunnel, now think about geometry, is actually capturing the light and bouncing it back off. And there you see already how this is much brighter. If we delete that tunnel, you see how this is looking very different. Control zero, Mac or PC to undo. And then this one, now we can move up, kind of like to here. So now we have a really bright thing on top and then everything is shooting down. Let's go to the front view and perspective. So we have vertical edges. Looks really nice. To adjust the contrast, we can go to rendering. Go down, color management, and then here in the look, we say high contrast. Now the darks are darker and the brights are brighter and it looks really cinematic. By the way, what this color management here is doing is very similar to when you take a photo on your iPhone or Android and then you go and start adding color effects to it. Pretty much the same stuff. Beautiful. Now what happens when we select this body and move this a little bit further up? There it looks like something really hot is up there and the light is coming down. Great. And that's actually room number two. You close this collection, turn this off, right click new collection and say room number three. In my 3D viewport, Z and solid. I go to the top view, shift A and add a plane. I mean, text speaking, we can do this here too. So this time, the X direction, I would like to be just six feet. So we create a small tunnel. And then the Y, that should be 15 feet. Very good. Okay. There's a scale factor. So we go object, apply, scale. Then let's go into edit mode. I will select this edge and then five feet. So E and Y, press five. And then here E and X, this is actually minus five. Very good. And then here we can select this one and say E and Y, uh, five, E and Y, and five, there we are. So here we go in, there is a direction, and then here, this, this, E and X, five. Okay, very good. Then we can select everything by pressing A, press E to extrude, type in 10, and here we know this is the front we would like to open press X and say delete face. And yeah, it's kind of like a 10 feet high uh, ceiling. The 
tunnels are six feet wide and then we have kind of like this one and the other one and if we want here this one there we can also do another extrusion i press e and x five and minus there we are beautiful so z and solid view there we can see kind of like what we have let's go to this view go to the front and perspective there we are now again with cameras in architectural photography or interior photography don't look up or down we look horizontal we rather actually move the position up and down we want to have vertical uh, architectural edges we're going to add actually a light now so here's z and wireframe shift a at a light point move this up in the render view let's start rendering and then we can just put it on looks like star wars let's here take a left turn ah it looks beautiful here we can do a right one bring this to there yeah, so you kind of like can see now how the light actually here emitting starts to bounce around. So bouncing, for example, means it goes, the, the light actually bounces this way, bounces off, and then continues this way and even to the front till basically somewhere here at one point, the energy is used up. So since we talk about energy, if I now give this light more power you see more light is actually coming towards us or reaching us the nice thing about um, the rendering is that it really simulates how light loses its energy i used here this annotation with the d key and i'm quickly going to remove all that stuff suck very good so what else can we do that's interesting um, to this tunnel? Maybe 60 watts, don't pay attention too much to watts. This is currently the default value. We want more to work with something that's similar like lumen or candela. So the amount of energy that's really emitted. But in rendering, we're also really paying attention to the look and feel. We can be more creative, which is the really nice aspect of this so the back we might we made nice and bright but the front is pretty dark so i would like to add some nice led light strips or lights which are recessed into the wall how can we do this it's actually pretty simple so i will select this geometry i go into edit mode edge select select two edges like these two then that's very important i press shift d so i can make a copy press escape so i stop moving and then i press e to separate it and then i leave edit mode now i have two objects again there's my other object I'm going to edit mode press a to select everything with edge select and e and y that's the y direction I moved this one 11 inches, so maybe four inches is enough for kind of like a nice recessed element. Perfect. Cool. The last thing maybe, I would like this lower corner here always to be the center where my object is. Shift S, cursor to select it. You see how the cursor snapped to there. And then I go into object mode, right click, and say, move the center point to here. Oops, right click, and there we are. Now it's there. You see, this is now the correct readout where this object is centered. I move this in a little bit. So what can I do with this now? First, I can go to material, say new, so now we give this a material, it's white. And we can go to emission and say, we'll make this four. Wow, look at that. 
we have actually a nice light piece. I can select now this line, Shift D to make a copy and Y. I move this copy down. Shift D and Y. Now I can make two or three Shift D and Y. They all use the same material. So if I change this material to one, 0.25, just enough, you see there is something. Uh, it affects all the objects at the same time. They share the same material. But we can go ahead and be more playful with the with the shapes. So maybe here I go into edit mode, this edge I move up. Let's say like this, very good. Then I go to here, edit mode, the same edge is selected move this up a tick more, go to here, edit mode, and move this up, leave edit mode. There you see this. Pretty nice, no? It's pretty easy. I can also select multiple objects at the same time, then go into edit mode. Now here, for example, I could do the reverse. So here I'm moving these in a little bit. Oh, look at that. That looks actually quite nice. And room number three is done. So let's turn this one off. Right click, new collection, room number four. I turn off rendering. I go to the top view. Now the 3D cursor, I want to go back to the world origin. Shift S, cursor to world origin. Shift A, and plane. So this one, I would like to be really long. So why, let's say 40 feet, really nice long tunnel. Then I go into edit mode, E and 10, very good. And I know here this front, I can open. I would like to create actually a slot that is 20 feet wide. So I will Z and solid view so it's easier to see. I will go to the loop cut right at the center. So that's basically 20 and 20. No? Okay, very nice. And now I can go to bevel and say bevel this please. 20. Um, that's really big. Undo one more time. Oh, hold on. I made a ah, I made a mistake. You see here this uh, scale factor. So uh, if I click on apply and scale, and now I go into edit mode and I do this. Now you see. 20 is really this. So that's the reason actually why you should add actually the scale factor. So a width of 10 left and right is 20 feet, the, the distance. That's perfect. So now another loop cut here, click and drag this over and then we bring this We can go four feet. There we are. Now we select this one here. We press E and go up two feet. And then X and delete this face. Beautiful. Here now let's go to this view, turn the camera on. We actually exit edit mode, shift A. This time now we add a sunlight. Z and rendering. And there we can see how the sunlight, uh, it doesn't really, by the way, matter where it's positioned, it shoots the light straight down. With the sunlight, it's simulating the distance of the sun, so we assume the sun rays are parallel. But what we can do is we can rotate the sun. And then this basically simulates how the light gets in there. 
So we have a nice wash on this wall, for example. Let's make this nice and strong. Keep in mind, our eyes really adjust to contrast. So when we're inside a room, our eyes adjust to low light environments. And if we are outside, well, our eyes adjust to the bright outside. We also shouldn't look really into the sun because that hurts because the sun is very bright. That's the reason why in these renderings we can make the sun really bright. And the color management will actually here help making the darks and the brights look really nice and popping. The number eight here I only put in simply to play kind of like with this value a little bit. We can also move the sunlight this way or that way. Now we, I don't want the sun to get into that space. So it's basically from behind shining towards me. Yeah, this looks actually pretty nice. Now I would like to create a nice ripped construction in here. So this is 20 inches, uh, sorry, 20 feet long. Let's work smart and not hard. I go into edit mode, face select, select this one, shift D to make a copy and escape. And then I press P to separate. Exit, click this body, right click origin to geometry. Now I go into edit mode, A, E, and yeah, how much is this? Four inches. Kind of like there. So four inches minus. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, perfect. Now I would like to have many pieces spread out. I can do the math, figure out how how much the distance is and make many copies. But I can rather go to modifiers, add modifier, generate array. This is the y direction. So this is by the way turned off, maybe five constant offset. And then this I override, what about one foot? You see now I have one foot between um, each piece, two feet, Oh, look at that nice detail we have now. Okay, plonk, 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 plonk. Very good. There, now this looks really nice and cool. So if we go in, go down, and there we can see now how the sunlight is being blocked by these architectural elements and it creates this really great striped look effect. And then we have this tiny pieces down here. To do this is actually perfect uh, because maybe the the first one here doesn't make sense and the last one with outside also makes no sense. I will do the following. I will press Shift D and then Y, move one to here. I am in snap mode. Bring this back, hold control, snap on it. And you see here I can lower the counts and then the template piece, I select X and delete. No, I have a little bit of a bigger space here and then there, yeah, that's all all perfect, it's all good. Um, I think we did this four inches, so this has to move back by minus two inches. So now this is evened out. Basic geometry. Well, it's kind of like what you learn in grade school. And look at that, now that actually looks really nice. So now if we play with the sun, we can just really create interesting effects how during the day light actually would come into the space. And also we can create quite interesting looking designs. Wonderful, room number four is done. 
So far we always have worked with very boxy rooms. Let's do a design where we have a rounded roof or ceiling. So Z and solid can go to the front view already. Here we can go to the top view, shift A and add a plane, 1010, 10, that is perfect. Very good. Then I go into edit mode, E10 to go up. And then I will do the following. I will select this face X and say delete vertices. That actually removes all this. And then I will go to edge select, select this edge and delete it. You see now we have just these three edges left. No, what I will do is the following. I, to position my arc perfectly, switch to point select. Select these two points, shift S and say, cursor to select it. You see now the cursor is there. No, I will go shift A or go to here. 64 vertices. So what's the radius? That's actually five feet. No, because five feet diameter is 10. And this whole thing along the X axis, 90 degrees. The edge data is a little bit in my way. Turn this off. There we are, beautiful. Then this lower point I can select, press delete. This point I can delete, select this, press L, select the rest, X and delete. And now I have to fuse everything together. Press A to select everything. Go to mesh and clean up and merge. Merge basically means after this, I don't have individual points there anymore. I just have one point. So it's kind of like you super gluing them together. There, see? Beautiful, now press A and E and Y and 40, really nice long tunnel. And then we close this by pressing F. There we are. I also have the distance here, scroll wheel to change the interface, move it and turn this off. And maybe go into a perspective look. Oh, um, I realized that here I'm in, actually in the wrong view. So viewpoint front, oh yeah, good. Yeah, I needed to switch it. There we are. Goody, very nice. So I would like to give this now a nice thickness. First thing I will do one little check. I will go to face orientation. This nearly looks good. Only this one is actually blue. This should be red. So I press A to select everything, mesh, normal, and calculate outside. Now we see all the inside is red, all the outside is blue. That's like sheet of paper. You have an, a front and a back. So we have them all um, set up so they have the same orientation. This is very useful because now when we go to generate modifier and solidify and say, I would like this one to have a thickness of, let's say six inches, even thickness to the outside, please follow complex calculations. So it's perfectly offsetting this inner shell. You can also say one foot. It's actually beautiful. This is totally interactive. One time we define it and then we can always uh, play with it. Mouse wheel, where are you? There's my menu. Okay, and leave edit mode. Then right click shade smooth. And you see here, I would, I kind of like, it looks a little bit funny. I will add actually a split edge. 
there we are beautiful now we can actually add our window so we have 40 feet of a wall we can easily cut in eight pieces so shift a make a nice cube so this cube now we could say is along the y one foot and along the z six feet i don't know how this will work so let's bring this into position so we'll move i will i will go this way move it in move it out hold control snap then i can bring this over so now you see this is flush with that wall and um i will move this in maybe four feet very nice then let's add an array modifier along the y-axis that's what we need four okay four pieces so four feet now it's two feet so two feet in between let's say eight 10 12 20 yeah now let's say 16 cool okay i'm going to make a new collection and then i will put this room in here this in there collection will be room five and then this piece i would like to be cut from this one there's a command for that with the room selected we go to modify and say boolean it's important to drag this one above this edge split because this should be the last command difference and then i click on this cube i don't really see much look if we turn this off there it is actually let's add the light shift a also here sun is kind of cool g r and give this a good amount z and rendered there we are and then we move this oh look at that you see now how the light actually shoots through pretty interesting so z and stop the rendering this cube i will show i mean we make this uh call this window one and then shift d and escape move this over a little bit move this up a little bit and then i can visually try to center this and then i call this double click and window two what i would like to do here is this should really nearly cut into the roof so i might have to go into edit mode face select select the top face and whoop move this really up and this move this really over let's say like to there okay and then this one here back so it nicely intersects and leave edit mode these two objects also have a scale factor applied so let's apply the scale and this will oh it will adjust our array okay here bring this back so eight and eight actually here we make five now we have one more there cool okay imagine we're adding two three more windows i don't want to add all the time a new modifier for this so we'll do the following right click and say new collection and then i will call this window cut you can also call this bananas apples it doesn't really matter i drag this in there turn this off go to here and then i say collection and there's window cut suck look you see all the objects inside that collection are being cut into that space now isn't that nice look at that and go to the top view 
rotate this a little bit. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, we can actually do it this way that on the right side we have the cuts, on the left side we have the uh, illumination of the sun coming through the part so we can create an, an interesting optical illusion actually. So for this then we want this actually to be 0, 90 and 0, they just sh it, the light shoots right through it. Yeah, and this room is actually done. Perfect. Time for room number six. So let's go ahead, make room number six collection. This is turned on and shift Z, I mean Z and um, solid, shift S, cursor to the world origin. And let's make a plane, there we are. Can make this 15, this should be really deep let's say 45, then we're going to apply the scale, going to edit mode E and 15 two. Then the front face we will select X and delete. There we are. Now we can go to the front view, perspective, zoom in a little bit and see what we're doing. Beautiful, okay. Let's actually stop. We're going to create a nice interesting pattern we're building in there. So this is actually a 15 by 15 uh, piece. So shift A, plane, 15 by 15. Again, let's do the apply, scale. Um, rotate 90 degrees. You see there's a rotation factor, so let's apply the rotation. So it's reset and then we can bring this in, bring this up and I'm holding the Alt key to snap this. I will add actually a solidify modifier. Two feet, we are to the inside. Oh, that's good, yeah, perfect. And now I will go into edit mode. Then I will say control R, that's actually the loop cut. Click and escape. Then I will go to bevel, bevel this. And this is more like trying to play with this. So how much do we have? Okay, so for feet, yeah, this is kind of like the radius. So eight feet diameter. And then control R, we bring one down. Okay, um, there's a little bit of a funny issue, don't worry. And then we can bring, slide this one up. Mm, mm, there, so let's say maybe here, very good. I wanna measure something. Yeah. Okay, very good. I'm holding actually the control key to measure it. This is actually the measurement tool. So 15 inches, uh, feet, and the other one is 15 feet two. And then this here is no, nine feet. Okay, so XX and XX, I wanted to perfect this. So I press GG to slide this up or down, I slide this down and then G and Z type in 10. So it goes 10 feet up. Then the slow edge here, I select X and delete this edge. There, now we have a nice kind of like, yeah, thing there. Leaf edit mode. We can bring this one in and slide it back. Maybe one, foot is actually better. And then we will give this an array. 
easily three pieces, constant offset where we can specify a distance, five feet, 10 feet. Yeah, this is good. Now that we can see where this is plus minus positioned. Oh, look at this. Oh, it looks quite nice. Now when we zoom in and frame this so we don't see the rest, there we can see what we have. So here in this exercise, now we're going to create a circular light, which is not part of the usual light pieces. So let's go to the top view. We're not in edit mode. Z and wireframe, shift A, circle, 64, five feet. That's maybe a tick too big. Three, yeah, this looks better. Then go into edit mode. Also keep the vertices 64. I switch to point mode so you see all the points. And then I can press E to move this up and Z, let's say six inches. And now we would like to thicken everything. So we can press A and then uh, spacebar and say solidify faces. So there we are. Rip. That actually should be four inches, but to the inside. So you see, it's like it's a surfacing offset. Actually, there's the command. If you if you press spacebar, you don't see this. Okay, maybe this is a tick too big. So what about three? Nah, what about two? That's good. Then this one now we can move up. Also here, right click, shade smooth, and then we are going to add an edge split. So it's nice and sharp. Go to the top, move one to here. Now we do Alt D, make a clone and Y. Alt D and Y. Alt D and Y. Uh, instead of Alt, it's also Option. Because these are clones, if we go ahead and edit one, so for example, a Option Alt, select the top one move one, you see the rest changes. These rings were way too tall. So this actually looks better. Beautiful. Now I go to the top view. So that's the first one. That one I rotate a little bit. So that's the last one that I rotate a little bit. Then here, this one goes up a notch and this goes down a notch. And look at that how, like now you see this play, how they are rotating. Here comes the nice thing. How do we make these things have light? So Z and render it while it's pitch black. Go to material, new, we call this lamp body. We don't go to emission yet because if we give this a light, I mean, it's all just a light illuminating piece. That's not what we want. Change my view and then I go into edit mode, face select, press option or alt and hold it and then click on this edge. So this one and then selects the loop ring. Now here we make a new plus new material, assign and call this lamp emission. That's actually, that gets that emission material. Four, oh, 10, 20. No, oh, okay, there we are. So then we then take a look at this. There we have actually a room. Now that has a really nice uh, play with symmetry. Everything is nicely centered. Everything gets smaller to the, the back, but then these light rings do actually rotate a little bit and create this really nice 
mood. We can then play around with this a little bit more because they are fitting into the between the walls. We can move them up. See how that works. At the bottom, uh, it doesn't really make sense because then you can't walk through that space. And yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Room number six is done. For room seven, let's actually build something more impressive in terms of scale, a really large room. I have the collection already turned on and created. And then here I'm in front view. There we are, actually view, front, perspective, top view. Shift A, make a plane. So 30 white and Y is 100. And then we are going to apply this scale. I go into edit mode, I press um, E to extrude this one down by one minus, perfect. So it's kind of like a nice board, Z and solid view. We're approaching actually modeling the space by borrowing a little bit from kind of like foam modeling, if you want to call it this way. So. Do this, Shift D, move this up, then RX 90, we rotated this, um, and then this we set to 50. Then we go to here, this corner I wanna move to there. So press G for move, then I press B and say snap point one to snap point two. Then I can select this one, Shift D, move this to there, Zoom in, GB, click and click. No, it's like foam, it just doesn't fall. We don't have gravity here. I would like to have 10 feet um, long windows there or doors to open. I'm kind of like inspired a little bit by the upcoming Dune part two movie. And for everybody who didn't see the first version, the architecture and lighting effects in that movie are really nice. Check it out. So Shift D, move this to here. R, Z, and 90. And then, uh, so this is the tall one. This will be 10. Then I can move this to here and move this up. G, G and B and go this corner to that corner, beautiful. So um, then now Alt D Y and that is basically minus 10, huh? yeah, minus 10, enter. These two, Alt D Y minus 20. Alt D Y minus 20. So that's actually how fast I was able to quickly generate my uh, eight pieces. Oh, this looks pretty good. Maybe two more. Alt or option D, Y minus 20. And that's too close. This looks good. Then I can select all those. Then Alt D and X. And now I hold the control key and snap it along the X axis to there. Beautiful. This one here, Shift D and escape. Bring this over, hold control and snap, release the control key. Then I go into edit mode, select this face and bring this over. Holding control key, of course. Most too fast, one more time. Shift D and Y, hold control. Go into Edit mode, select that face, move this, hold control, snap, release the mouse button. Okay, so why uh, did I make so many doors? Well, we can actually open and close them. And here's a really cool thing about Blender. We have different uh, origins. So 
do I rotate all at the same time? Or do I rotate everything around the active? Or what's this? The individual points. Look at this. Pretty cool. But if I rotate the right, I want the left to look the same. So, hmm, that doesn't work. So what can we do? Check this out. This one, I will give an mirror modifier and along the x-axis, select this one. So then you, 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 you. And then object, uh, where did they put this to now? They moved this around actually. Link transfer there, copy modifiers, flop. So all the other objects have that modifier too. You see when I move this, the opposite moves. To change all at the same time, we can select them and then we click onto here, hold the Alt Option key, there we are, release the option key, enter 90 degrees, flop, cool, okay. Now we would like to have a nice opening on top. So I will do actually here the following. I will go to edit mode, select the top face X and delete, select this face. Then I for insert or that's kind of like uh, also an offset comment Zoop. there it is i can move this one inwards and there now I pay attention to this opening and then i select this and e go up x and open this beautiful now i want to have kind of like a similar opening but flatter directly on the bottom how can I do this? Well, I just delete this one. Make a copy of this. Shift D and Z, move this down. This is the Y direction, so 180. Move this up, hold Control and snap it back. And then I go into Edit Mode. Select these edges. Press F to fill or press F, better result, and slide this up. There we are. Oh, where did my other stuff go to? Ah, <laughs> because we deleted that object, now this doesn't have a clipping. So here, clonk, that one is back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we just re-establish that linking. So copy the values to there. Beautiful. Okay. That is good. Now to rotate all those at the same time, I press M and make a new collection. Doors. So it's easier to select them all at once. And put this in there. Because when I go to here, and say select object, you see this is all selected. So I don't have to click, 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 click inside the 3D view. Let's add a um, solidify modifier. Uh, generate, there we are. How thick are those? Uh, X, so one foot, okay. One foot, opposite direction complex and then we do the same here shift l by the way is no it's not anymore control l control l copy modifier there it's all good now shift a let's add the sun there we are sun is here there z and render mm, this looks pretty nice now we can actually select all our doors, either by how I showed you this or select this individually, R and Z. And then we can rotate this. Look at this, isn't that nice? The play we have. 
the sun. Let's make it really bright. Wow, beautiful. Top view. We can rotate the sun. Ugh. How do we do this now? I wanna rot I wanna have this view, but I don't want sunlight to get in there. Okay, so what do we do? We need to cover the spec up. So this one, shift D and Y, we move the spec. Then we move this to here or GB click, click. And then we can go into edit mode to work clean and say this one back and then GB this one to there. But now <laughs> we have this sealed up, what do we do? Ah, it's okay, no worries. We go to the front view, Shift S, cursor to world origin, Shift A, camera, go to the side view, move the camera to here, press S so we can see how big this camera is. And then we look through the camera. Yeah, but we still actually see that wall. Well, I will go back here to the side view, Z and wireframe, and then I go to the camera, viewport display, limits, and look at this. So there is 100 feet a limit. So that's actually inside the space, 150 feet. So that's outside. And where do I want the clipping to start? Right, we are after this wall. You see now we can actually look into this room while we have, technically speaking, that wall right in front of our eyes. I would like the camera to be more horizontal. So I go to resolution and say maybe 500 horizontal by 1000 vertical. Okay. That uh, works better. Well, we can see that we might have to move this a little bit further back. Then we can move this up, maybe a little bit further in. Okay. Then here for the camera, we have to adjust the clipping start. There we are. Maybe we move the camera tick more in. Okay. There. Okay. But actually, I want this to be cinematic. So the camera has to go really on the ground, but then we can't really look up. Well, you could say, well, we can just rotate, but no, we don't do rotation things. Uh, also here, the clip end needs to be wider. So the reason why is just we get rotating vertical edges, but we can simply shift the camera up. So you see how it's still looking horizontal, but we can see what's more on top. And this actually now is the perfect moment to introduce my little fella. Let's go to file and append. The file to download is in the link of this uh, movie description. Go to wherever you have this uh, save to, architecture, human standing, and we go pa, 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 object. There I actually copied in uh, two females, one male, pick the one you want. I select male one and hello there, bring it in. And Z and wireframe. If I select him, there we are. Right click, I could say origin to geometry. And then I can rotate him around his central point. Move the body to there. Zoom in a little bit more. Maybe a tick to there. I mean, look at that. Now it's actually, you can really sense now how majestic actually this space is. Because we're doing very fast rendering, now the quality is a little bit hmm, <laughs> not so good. Oops. 
it's more like an oil painting. If we set this to 50 and 50, the more sharper details we get. That's the reason why we have here the max sampling to 100. But while we really explore how something could look and feel, uh, quite honestly, if we just run like with 5.5 or 10.10, 10, it's not going to look beautiful, but it's good enough to give us an idea how this is actually working. So maybe a little bit more fine tuning there. And actually when we move him kind of like over the bright light, let's say here, that's a really nice contrast now we can play. Awesome, room seven is done. And the last one, room number eight. In the right view, we just exit the camera. Then in the right view, we just create a new plane. And this plane is actually X 10 feet and Y 15 feet. There we are, beautiful. Let's go to a 3D view. We will go into edit mode E and Z and bring this up 25 feet. Then I will go to edge select, select this one, press GG and slide this to the back. And then I can bring this back by four feet. Beautiful. The front piece and the back piece, I will cut open. There we are. And from the beginning, now I will add an array modifier. This time here, I will use this relative offset that makes a copy of the piece 100%. One is 100%. There you can see how this works. So it's kind of like proportional. Four pieces, there we are. Now we would like to have a small um, walkway, an opening, an opening here. Okay, so first thing we do is control R, do loop cut and bring this down. And then I can move this one up and that should be around 80 inches. Beautiful, okay. Then I can do another loop cut here, control R. And we are keeping this one kind of like a little bit above. If I press GG now, you see how I can slide this one up and down. Let's say like this, beautiful. Then control R, we do our loop cut at the center, click and then right click. And then we're going to add a nice bevel. But before we do this, this line, this line, and this line, select X and dissolve. Then now I can select these two, there we are. And then go to the bevel command and we create our space in between. Say 40 inches, how wide is this? Not much, let's go with 60 inches. This looks good, beautiful. So since this actually should be an opening, these two faces here I can, uh, at the moment, delete. So we can see through. Now if we move our camera into position or view, let's say go to here, there we can get kind of like the idea, a really high ceiling. From here to there, I would like to have a little bit of a handrail. So control R and control R. There you see this. Then um, shift alt or option, click this one. Now we have both loops selected and this is the Y axis, S and Y. Uh, okay, here bonding box, S and Y, we can bring them together. Oh, far, it doesn't really matter much. So let's see, now there we can see, that's kind of like a, a foot, 12 inches. Yeah, let's say 
something substantial, close to two feet. There we are. Very good. Control R one side, Control R the other side, and then both I can select. GG, move this down. GZ, bring this up. How high should we say? 40 inches. Okay. What about 30 inches? Yeah, this is good. Now what we will do is actually we um, have to extrude and bring this over to the other side. So I will do two loop cuts here, select all these points. Maybe I move this one over, it's easier to see when I'm clicking, go to the side view. So you see there it should be GG, I just bring this down, plus minus, it's okay. We're taking a little bit of a shortcut. I'm moving this up, go to here, hold control, and now they're all at the same level. So with that done, what can we do? We actually can go ahead and cut these spaces open. Then I select this edge and this edge, F, whoa correct edges and you see I'm patching in the missing geometry. Uh, a quick check about face orientation. Yeah, that's fine. Very good. Cool. Okay. Now, the now this should be a a walkway. So I can select all this, press E and X and create a tunnel. And then I can select all these edges, press E and X. I want to straighten this S, X and zero there. Perfect. I press F and then I move and press Y and move this a little bit away. So I have this separated for easy presentation. Cool. This actually will be our light emitting material. So let's make a new material. This is maybe wall. New, new, assign, light. And then we can give this an emission. Let's give this a test. Wow, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Now you see when we move this in, how this illuminates these tunnels. Works really good. I only disconnected this, so it's very easy to move these lights around. Beautiful. So I would like to also have something um, on the front. One second. There we are. There. I mean, I said front, I meant on the ceiling. <laughs> So here, control R, make a cut, and then we will do a bevel, small one. How much doesn't really matter. Then we extrude this one up. Very good. This face we delete, and this face we delete. Now we have a nice channel. And then this face gets this light material assigned. Now the light comes from the top. Pretty cool. Exit, and now we can go ahead and um, patch the back, for example, in. Shift A, make a plane. Move this plane to here. Go into edit mode, point mode, move mode. This one, G, hold control. This one, hold control, control. Control. Here I need to have two more points, so I press X and delete this edge, and then E, Control, E, Control. Uh, wait, X, these two points I select, F, select all, press F, it's filled. 
there. Looks pretty cool, no? Now also here we need actually a camera to really get this nice cinematic look. So shift AE, make a camera. There we are. And then this camera I can position to here. This camera I know I want to look through. So I set this camera as my active. Now we can have multiple cameras. Go to the camera, shift this up. There we are. Maybe I need to bring this a little bit closer in. Or we just look at it from the outside. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Probably a little bit further back. And then I can move this a little bit further up. Very good. The top one here, this area, I would like to fill too. So Shift A, new plane. Press Tab for the edit uh, mode. And then this one. G control, G control. Suck. Now oh, this is filled in. The last thing maybe I would like to do is I have a nice um, element that is under there. So this piece, right click, reset geometry, to, um, origin to the geometry. Shift D, move this down. Now I can do the following. I'm snapping these points to there. This I move over, and now this one I want to snap on this edge. So edge snap. So this one I move, and look, it snaps on the edge. Perfect. So now I can press A and E and extrude this a little bit. Leave the edit mode by pressing tab key, and then let's give this some erase. We can go with the constant or relative. I'm actually shooting for look now. So when I try to kind of like face this out, so there's one over the center, plus minus, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter as much. This is really more what we're doing here for the look. Maybe less, then we can stretch this out more. Ah, but see with less, we can see the light a little bit, but you also see what's happening on this wall. Maybe we want to bring this down a little bit more there. And then these points move, hold control and snap on this edge. By the way, we can also snap onto a face, so of course this time it doesn't work. <laughs> I love this when this happens. Okay, back to edge mode. There. Beautiful. You see? Actually really, really nice. And maybe also here for the scale we can bring in kind of like a person, see here, I bring her in, right click, and origin to there, up, 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 maybe a little bit there. Or when we put the person actually into this room, Rotate it. Now we can see something is happening there actually. Very good. Now, this is actually room number eight. Now, to create actually a really nice rendering, we for each room can create a camera and just put it in front of it. Now, here we have kind of like a vertical uh, image. So we use these dimensions to get a decently good quality. We can set this to sample 100 and then we go to render image. And then you will see that 
it renders it out 100 and then it gets this nice image. And then we can go image and save as and save it wherever we would like to. Now, how do we do this actually? Kind of like with this room because this is square. So in this case, now we add simply a new camera. There is my camera. There we are. This time now, I would like this to be 1000 by 1000. So it's a square. And I move this one back. We want to look through this camera. And there we are. A little bit up. A little bit in. And then hit render. And there you see, this way it only shows basically what is inside there. And this really looks like a nice photo. And then we can go save as and save it. And that's it. Congratulations. Oh, I forgot maybe one thing to mention. So this is actually the camera for this room. So I drag this one into that collection. So I have always in the individual rooms my lights, including also my cameras. So think about these collections kind of like as scenes. The only thing we always have to adjust to, because we have different camera formats, we might have to adjust then the resolution accordingly. That's it. Perfect.